Memory Transcription Subject, Captain Sovlin, United Nations Fleet Command. Date, Standardized Human Time, February 1st, 2137. Tyler Cardona solved our logistical issues with the plan to show Hunter around Earth. He invited us to lodge at his apartment in Columbus. The blonde officer was slated to handle some interrogations of the Archives personnel during the days, but otherwise was free for shore leave like the rest of us. Oddly, Marcel's friend was non-specific about the specifics of those questioning sessions. Yet again, I got the impression there was something I didn't know about the people taken from the base. Tyler only stated that it was better the less I was made aware of. If the humans were torturing Farsal staff, I couldn't blame them for succumbing to fury. Earth couldn't afford negative public relations now though, from what I heard. Rumblings reached my ears as we departed Monaghan's ship that the United Nations was planning a massive diplomatic convention. Venlil Prime was especially shaken by the news that the Federation had performed drastic alterations on them and the issue had taken front and centre in their election. I wondered if these discoveries would be what toppled the Colchian Farsal conspiracy for good. The Farsal won't be around on the galactic stage anymore regardless. They're banished to their homeworld for the foreseeable future. The duration of the war at the minimum. After a rough night's sleep on a water mattress, I awoke to the sound of a slamming fridge door. Hunter was already awake and Tyler was showing him the icebox's contents. Did ancient Terrans have the concept of freezing food or did they worry about spoilage at all with fresh prey available for consumption? It would become evident quite soon how advanced, or not, the 1960s human was. I wished again that the Ortol, Tyler's exchange partner, was here to manage the primitive-minded aspects of this stay on Earth. Everyone likes mac and cheese. See? I can cook. Officer Cardona strode over to a microwave and popped the door open. He then fumbled with the packaging box, sliding a small carton out. That worked for you, Hunter. The ancient predator squinted at the box, staring at the ice crystals within. You eat this... cold? Oh, shit! Is that one of those fancy microwave things? I heard those irradiate your food and take all the nutrients out. Hell, I even heard the Soviets use it for mind control. Don't be ridiculous, I chimed in. It heats up water molecules. It's basic science. It's like putting nuclear fallout in your food. The radiation isn't ionized. And mind control. Where your people stir... <coughs> Tyler coughed before sliding the tray into the microwave. Let me just punch a few buttons. It's perfectly safe, I promise. We've had hundreds of years to see if it's not, you know. Exactly. Regardless, why would humans ever think something so crazy and unfounded? Says the one raised in the Federation. <laughs> Ouch, Tyler. You're comparing Dossa to Mazix there. It was a different time. Humans had less refined views on... many things. Like the captain told you, we had enough nukes pointed at each other to end civilization in one go. Isn't that right, Hunter? The brown-haired primate nodded. Yeah, you see, the Soviets want to destroy democracy itself. They'd like it if we were all communists. When I was in school, we did drills of nuclear attacks, and the teachers had us hide under desks. I couldn't avoid gaping in horror as a mental image materialized. Had humans really taught their children that they could be irradiated at any time, the way the Federation did with predator attacks? The rhetoric would sound paranoid and unhinged if there hadn't been a very real threat of nuclear annihilation. I couldn't imagine living in a world where the possibility of self-inflicted extinction loomed over their heads. What was the point of hiding under a desk against an atomic bomb? Furthermore, the translator took its time chewing on the first part Hunter said before conveying communism as a classless society. It wasn't evident to me what that had to do with democracy, but Hunter spat the term with disgust. Carlos's words from back at Silis about not viewing others as people rang in my ears. Perhaps this nuclear standoff originated from an ideological rift. It sounded like this Soviet tribe, a name I'd never heard before, were viewed as the enemy in Hunter's territory. What's bad about a classless society, I queried. Wouldn't equality be a good thing? The microwave dinged, but Hunter's eyes were boring into my skull. Oh, fuck. Are the aliens commies? Did... did the Soviets win? We didn't try hard enough to stiff them out. Shit! They'd kill me for criticizing them and all. Lay it on me, Sovlin. I didn't know Earthlings killed people for free speech. I have no idea who these Soviet people are, and I have no equivalent for the word communism. From what my translator says, it sounds like an unattainable ideal. 
If ancient humans knew how to have everyone get by, I am all ears. I joined our military to provide for my family. It was a well-paying, respectable career. Sovlin, most countries today have lax laws on speech, and you won't be taken to the handful that don't. Tyler placed the steaming food by Hunter, handing him a plastic fork. You can say whatever you like about humans and our government. It's considered a basic right. Hunter pushed waxy yellow food around with his silverware. You've never heard of the Soviets? Sovlin has no reason to know them. The Soviet Union collapsed at the end of the 20th century, broke into several independent countries. <laughs> That's righteous. And now that I think about it, the Aussie called me a Yank, so USA still exists. Correct. Unreal. I was surprised you let a chick carry a gun. <laughs> she sure didn't act very ladylike. Must be distracting having eye candy around on the battlefield. The tongue on that one... seemed like a shrew. I flinched with surprise, hearing such objectifying and belittling remarks from the primitive predator. The blonde human looked appalled, and his eyebrows arched up with disgust. Officer Cardona's fists clenched and unclenched, while his teeth bearing seemed like the unfriendly kind. Reading between the lines, I could sense that ancient Terrans didn't believe females belonged in certain professions. It also sounded like Sam's speech patterns didn't align with the passivity Hunter viewed as fitting. Did the males see themselves as better due to a higher propensity toward physical strength? Maybe Earth truly wasn't a charitable society when we observed them. The fuck did you just say? Tyler hissed. Hunter chewed on a mouthful of food. What? I mean, it's bonkers. They're the fairer sex. Pretty girl like that belongs at home, not fighting aliens on another planet. Look, I know that was the prevailing thought in your times, but you'd better drop that idea quick. You're gonna get some teeth knocked out if you don't. If Sam's capable of doing the job and willing to take the risks, why shouldn't she serve? It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. Everyone has an equal chance to prove themselves nowadays. You're getting hot under the collar there. I only want to protect women. Was polite to her when she was around. I didn't mean for you to get unblued or anything. Like I told Sovlin, I don't belong here. Clearly culture isn't the same. You call denigrating half of humanity cultural, I growled. Tyler panned his head. Tolerance is what I meant about less refined views. It's no different from you calling us predators and your insults toward Onzo. It's not an excuse, but I don't think Hunter knows better. Stems from a place of ignorance. There must have been recent changes in humans as a species after all, so I gleaned some insight into how the Federation could frame pre-FDL Earth as an uncivilized world. Perhaps Hunter had some problematic views from his upbringing, though I didn't imagine it could be that difficult to show him the errors in his thinking. There were some positives and notions he espoused, such as democracy and the right to critical speech. On a separate note, Tyler's arguments about my predator hatred being similar fell flat. That was related to personal trauma. Why would anyone else cling to biases when shown the flaws in their thought? Especially a primitive waking up. Hunter should realize he needs to catch up with more enlightened minds. Hunter abandoned his half-eaten meal and padded over to the couch with a frustrated look. He cradled his head in his hands, breathing a flustered sigh. The human snatched a remote but looked confused by the sea of buttons on the touch interface. He set it back on the coffee table, wringing his hands in frustration. Tears welled in his eyes, which I suspected was his overwhelming dread returning. I found myself a spot next to him and picked up the remote. I'm not gonna make it a day here, Hunter groaned. My opinion seemed to be an issue. I switched on the streaming services. Oh, have I ever been there? I'm still there. It's hard to know that there's a problem with your thinking when it's how you were taught. If you're open-minded and you try to be kind, it'll all work out. Tyler thinks I'm ignorant. Let's drop the subject and revisit how uh, societal norms have changed later. Why don't you tell me what you were studying in school? I was getting an economics degree. First person in my family to go to college. Didn't want to work on a farm forever. Studying the markets and managing finances, the ebb and flow of the entire system. I enjoyed it. Your turn. Why did you wind up joining humanity's cause after your planet fell? I did terrible things fighting against Earth because I hated predators and I wanted you to suffer. I turned myself in when I realized you were genuine people. What terrible things did you do? Like Hitler stuff? Like who? Wait, 
I heard that name when that Koth abomination was talking about the Axe's prophet. A ruthless, murderous despot, Sovlin. A name spoken with disgust on Earth to this day. Tyler chimed in. Both of you shouldn't ask about topics that will cause only anguish. Hunter narrowed his eyes. Uh, was Sovlin actually like that? No, he tortured a POW. I'm not making excuses for him, but Marcel, the victim, agrees that Sovlin has suffered immensely for his acts and wants him forgiven. Wow. Honestly, knowing his background, I was expecting something a lot worse. Next question. What are those rectangle graphics you're cycling through on the TV? I glanced down at my paw, realizing I was skimming through the human's media collection on autopilot. The fact that Hunter glossed right over my crimes made me wonder what the metrics for evil were back in his times. From what Tyler said, and past comparisons to Arxa figures, it stood to reason that Earth was once home to predators of unfathomable cruelty. Most Terrans possessed even keel dispositions and were emotional creatures, but the savage outliers could gain power then. Laws and morals weren't as stringent on a societal scale, or so I was beginning to gather. This is a streaming service. That's where that video stream phrase came from earlier. It has a collection of movies and shows that you browse, I explained. Hunter's eyes widened. And you can watch any of them. There's hundreds of options. Thousands more like. Every film known to man is on one subscription service or another. Tyler moseyed over from the kitchen, gnawing on a breakfast bar. He plopped himself into a reclining chair. Stop and start it at your leisure. Binge watch an entire TV season if you want. No ads on the full tiers. Cable hasn't existed at all for over 50 years. That's unreal. You have unlimited... Constant entertainment. The pictures on those, uh, movie reels look so clear, too. We had three TV channels, and you watched whatever was on. Primetime just switched to fully color this year. W what was this year for me? Are you saying your television wasn't in color? I asked in bewilderment. How do you have a visual show without using any colors? Was it just an audio show like a podcast? A what? Is a podcast like radio? Tyler jumped in. Yes, but it's accessed by episode at leisure. And Sovlin, TV in its early days was in black and white. Monochrome, if you know that word. I see, I breathed. I've never heard of such a primitive visual medium. Well, uh, why don't we pick out a movie? She, <laughs> you just passed Satellite Wars with Manny Griffin. <laughs> I love that movie. We can give you and Hunter a history crash course. Mimicking a human shrug, I clicked on the title Tyler mentioned. Studio introductions gave way to a burning fire before the camera panned up to a missile slamming into a power station smokestacks. Screams were echoing through the air as panicked actors ran across the screen. The camera cut to a predator that I vaguely recognized from the Escape from the Cradle promos who had a panicked look in his binocular eyes. Dirt and grime was smeared across his oily skin. Holy shit! Why would they show what's basically a raid in such vivid detail? You can see the missiles hit. The lead actor, likely Manny Griffin, was helping a half-conscious human Dr. limp along. What Orange light this? detonated behind them, and the two primates went flying. The camera dropped to the ground, turning blurry as a ringing sound echoed through the speakers. My spines were bristling from the intensity of the scene. The fog cleared from the lens, showing Terran hands fumbling to get up. The shot followed Manny, who was calling out the missing comrade's oh, name. Buddy, the human's eye white suddenly became glaring. Charlie, it was a look of primal oh, horror, oh. before he skidded over to a shrapnel pile. I shrieked, realizing the actor was kneeling by a bloodied corpse. The violence was graphic and uncensored. Photorealistic even. Fuck, 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 a pole punctured yeah, through the fallen go. primate's heart, Charlton. and purple-red liquid soaked through his white shirt. Ah. I averted my eyes, trying not to throw up while Manny issued a despairing wail on screen. Oh my! They actually showed the injury! Hunter had gasped at the gory sight as well, despite supposedly being from a more violent Earth than Tyler. That looks real! That's... worse than Psycho! I kept my gaze on the floor. The, that is a sick thing to show the audiences. <laughs> In the opening scene, no less. They didn't show blood in your time, Hunter. Not many did. It was pretty taboo. Brutality shouldn't be depicted in detail. Tyler paused the movie, scratching his scalp. 
Maybe this was a bad idea. This is about the human cost of the Sat Wars, so there's a lot of stuff getting destroyed and chaos. I see why you humans censor your movies around us, I grumbled. I can't believe a pre- Ancient Terran has a better take on immortalizing brutality than you. Though I shouldn't be surprised when you play games about shooting other humans. He does what? Hunter demanded. Man, what is wrong with you? Are you a serial killer to even call that a game? The blonde Terran snorted. <laughs> For fuck's sake, I feel like I'm talking to Sovlin. It's adrenaline, a power fantasy, and it's a normal pastime nowadays. Please tell me you're joking. This planet is nothing like the one I left. There's no wading into the future. It's more having a notion of madness dropped on my head. Hunter had his nose scrunched with disgust, though this time I agreed with his input. The display of violence modern Terrans treated as entertainment was revolting. The primitive primate stalked off to the guest room and Tyler watched him leave. So far, I'd failed in my promise to help the out-of-time predator integrate with his homeworld. I'd only learned disturbing things about his time period and views, yet Officer Cardona still managed to surpass Hunter's violence tolerance. Humans are exhausting. How can one species be such an enigma and have such an extensive collection of sordid oddities? Hunter's response to bloodshed afforded a definitive answer to his thoughts on violence and willingness to perpetrate it himself in a bind. He would have gotten sick boarding the cattle ship back at the cradle, just as Carlos had. Despite understanding his backward worldview better now, I had no idea how to help him adjust to the norms of the modern era. Whatever the reawakened Terran said, this was only wading into Earth's offerings. There were greater extremes on the scales of both technology and entertainment than we saw today. We haven't even introduced him to every alien species and the history of the galaxy yet, I remarked to Tyler. We haven't tried to locate his current relatives. From the stuff in your apartment alone, he's having a reaction to just about everything. The blonde human sighed. <sighs> just about everything has changed. The hand of progress moves things forward, you know. You and I would be lost 150 years in the future too. Forget the future. I'm lost in the present. Hey, you're not alone in that. It's hard thinking for yourself. But you're part of the whole Hand of Progress now. 150 years from now, I want us to still be here and the Colchians to not. Hmm, you and me both. We'll have to see what comes of your hush-hush diplomatic convention. Maybe the archives will change things. I don't know much, man. I'm sure it'll be broadcasted back home when it goes down. Some alien hotshots are coming into town, and the UN silence is more about figuring out how to sell it to the Humanity First crown. The truth about the uplifting shit has all of our allies rattled though, so we gotta seize the day. The Venlil must be losing their minds. I wonder how Slonic is doing. Tyler's eyes darkened. I know the answer to that. It's not my business to say more, but Slanik isn't well. Not to mention the Battle of Malu is still ongoing, deadlocked. That declaration made my heart sink as I recalled how angry Marcel's exchange partner had been after my appearance. The Ven Lil had been through tremendous trauma, bouncing between grueling battlefields and watching a friend's torture. Part of whatever was hurting him was my fault. The new revelations about Ven Lil kind could have been the stressor that tipped the scale and led to a full-on breakdown. There was nothing I could do to help Slonik and Marcel, however. I had to focus on the person I could still make a positive impact for. There had to be options available to aid Hunter in fitting in and learning the proper etiquette of our time. Humans were fundamentally different all those years ago in some ways. Good traits worth salvaging existed within him nonetheless, so I wasn't going to write him off as a savage predator yet.